everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Reef Talk podcast. I am back with you with another brief tale from someone who is I'm excited to have on because we've been talking about it for forever and we finally got them on. It's Mr. Cody from Instagram. Welcome. Hey, Tim. It's great to be here. It's great for you to have you here, although we were talking beforehand about Southern California weather and I don't like him now, so I'm just letting you know before we get into it. Because <laughs> it's always warm there. Oh, don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. 75 I'm, and sunny. Oh, don't like you today. I just told you that. So, <laughs> All right. So he's in Southern California, in the life, living it up in warmth, while the rest of us are freezing our butts off. So just keep that in mind, people. I think you'll come to my side later. All right. For those who don't know you, other than living in Southern California, tell our listeners a little bit about you. Yeah. So my name is Cody Chambers. I live in Southern California. I have uh, started the Instagram account uh, maybe about uh, three years ago or so uh, just to document my love of underwear. And I feel like, you know, the podcast and this podcast and some of the other you know, people that I follow throughout the years have inspired me to start a social media account where I could, you know, show my my love of underwear and the things that I that I have. And so, you know, it's one of those things that I, I've always loved for quite some time. And I know that, you know, for myself, I live a pretty active lifestyle. So, you know, I'm constantly going to the gym or playing sports. And so I'm you know, changing underwear all the time. So it's so every, it's a big part of my day. You could be one of those people I talk about who have so much underwear, you could uh, not change, not wear the same pair twice in a year. Because we talked about that on, our, on a recent show that someone had 10,000 pairs. And I'm like, how do you, even if you change three times a day, how would you get through those? But I could definitely go through maybe a year uh, without changing. I, I feel like that's pretty accurate. But I'm just like, 10,000 I'm like, I, A, wouldn't know how to store such a collection. And B, I'm like, how would you know what you have? I would buy, like, things over and over. That's what I was thinking. How do you know How do you know what you have? And how do you know that you just don't accidentally uh, lose something at the same time? You know, how do you know if someone came over and stole your number? You wouldn't know. Um, I feel like that actually has happened to me once or twice, but that's a different story for See, another that's day. That's a different podcast, but you know what happens. Everyone out there, everyone knows, especially the gay boys, you know you've had your underwear stolen at least once on a hookup. I'm just saying, you know. Oh, I have, I have my own trophies, too. Uh, exactly. So I'm not really... So what goes around comes around, but God, they took a really nice care. It was rounder bum, comic print. Oh, brief. the bastard. Yeah, I've yes. taken... I've taken my share too, but usually I get to the point where I asked now, or I asked, and it was like, oh yeah, you can have it. And I'm like, score. I got real lucky on that point. But that's a different podcast. We won't talk about that. The last podcast yes. was selling your underwear. So, you know, it, we can do that later. Yeah. Definitely. So, when did you discover your love of underwear? What was your origin story on that? I feel like for myself, I've always been fascinated with it. I I remember being like a young kid, probably about like five years old, having, you know, a, a favorite pair. And uh, it was like my birthday one year. And I remember like setting a, a pair of underwear aside that I wanted to wear because it was like my favorite pair. <laughs> so I definitely remember that. And, nice. Um, you know, growing up and being in school, I'd always be interested in if a boy's underwear was showing and just seeing what they were, you know, what they wore, because no one really spoke about underwear. It was kind of like a secret thing, but I was just curious mm-hmm. to see what uh, what uh, what other boys were wearing. And, you know, I grew up and uh, obviously, um, you know, I realized that, you know, I was attracted to men. Uh, so, Yes, uh, the underwear aisle, of course, uh, was always a staple for every gay man's journey <laughs> through life. Yes, it was. Um, but more, in, I guess, really, I, I noticed for sure is uh, in the in the in the '90s because I'm 32. I'm sure you remember these commercials. Any gay man will remember these commercials. Uh, the Michael Jordan commercial, where oh, he walks yeah. in the locker room. 
yes, this is canon. <laughs> so he walks in the locker room and they're all the guys in their uh, white briefs and they look at Michael, he grabs his underwear. And so they realize, oh, we want to wear what Michael's wearing the next week. He's wearing the different uh, pair and they're wearing what he was wearing last week. And I just remember thinking that that commercial was just, you know, I was young. So, I mean, I, I just, I don't think it, I found it sexually, you know, appealing or anything. It was just more so interesting. And so that those commercials, the uh, there's also another commercial uh, with Michael Jordan where uh, there are two ladies sitting on a bench and they're trying to determine whether or not the guy was wearing boxers or briefs. Oh, you yeah. probably remember this I commercial. I remember that. I love that commercial. Uh, as a young kid too and so I just remember like oh I didn't know that there were bikinis or boxers because I only wore briefs at the time so yeah I, I remember those underwear commercials I don't think that they show underwear commercials as much these days but god the 90s were big for underwear commercials they do but not like they used to because even like the 2000s, the 99, 2000, Two Exists had an underwear commercial, and I think it was MTV that was mm -hmm. so Two Exist. But uh, yeah, so I remember those commercials because at the time I was out with friends and we'd always try to guess what guys were wearing because we'd go to the mall where all the gay boys went. And so mm -hmm. we'd always try to guess what they were wearing under their pants. So, yes, that that commercial struck home. And I'm like, look, they made a commercial about us. Um, yes. So that was always fun. But, yeah. I still do this to the, to this day. I still, you know, question as to whether or not a guy is wearing, you know, boxers or briefs or, you know, at this point, a jock strap, a thong underneath their, their clothing. The ones that get me are the really tight khakis or suit pants. And then you see the boxer brief outline. And I'm just like. Seriously, oh, you're wearing those okay. tight the worst. pants, and or you sit there, they're on like the compression ones, and you see like the seam going up and down, and it's like mm -hmm. you're like, yes. oh, you need something. You're wearing better. You're wearing you're wearing such a great suit, tight fitting pants, you know, form fitting pants, and you're wearing like a Hanes boxer brief or Nike compression short, or you know that I can see the line on the leg, which you know is a little bit, you know, uh, I dare I say. You know, it's nice to see, but at the same time, it's repulsive to see. <laughs> it's like, time. wear something better, but that that's another podcast, too. So we'll skip yeah. that. I will get stuck on that tangent, and we'll go forever. So do you remember the first really good pair of underwear you bought yourself? Um, so other than, like, you know, in high school, uh, where my friends and I, we bought those life thongs from walmart oh yeah <laughs> on a dare. i remember those they came in a three pack and were different colors i think we bought them as like a dare and little did they know i actually enjoyed wearing it so yes i remember my first real pair was i think it was right outside of after i graduated or no it was in high school um, i grew up in a small town so one year my family and i went on vacation and there was a calvin klein store so this had to have been in the uh, late 2000s. And at the time, there was like this really attractive soccer player, like blonde, long, long hair. And he was their spokes spokesperson at the time. And I bought a pair of white. Uh, they were a pair of like white sport style briefs. They weren't sport cut, but they were just, you know, the fabric was moisture wicking and I thought that they were really cool and I remember being in the store with little pocket money because I was still in high school trying to decide uh -huh. you know which would be the best choice you know do I want a brief do I want to um, for the first time I saw a fashion jock strap do I want to get a, a, a thong you know and I said you know what let's go for a brief and I remember wearing that I even wore it prom night <laughs> it was, oh it was nice prom yeah. did it match your tie at least did you do that um, no, it was a uh, black tie. So the briefs were white. I, I have a thing for white briefs. For those who follow my social media, you'll know that I, I do like a, a white brief, a tidy whitey. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nice. And how did this first pair you bought sort of influence your journey forward? Because you said you mentioned the jockey life thongs and then this pair. So what made you 
want to buy more and grow your underwear journey? Yeah, I wanted to, I liked the way that I looked in, in the brief and obviously being young and, uh, in high school with a way less developed body, <laughs> you're, you feel like you look like the guy in the package, but in no way do you actually look like the guy in the package, but it made me feel so great. It made my, you know, it made my package look great. Uh, it made uh, me feel good. So anytime I wore them, I just knew that um, I had a certain confidence to me, and I, I liked the way that it made me made me feel. And so with that, I used that feeling uh, just to kind of go about my day, have the confidence, and also want to save up and and buy on you know other pieces of underwear, try out for my next purchase after that was a, a hip brief, a Calvin Klein hip brief and a nice. full cut brief. They're really nice. Yeah. And then at, at that point I, I went from Calvin Klein cause I feel like that's a good ba- you know, almost the gold standard of, of underwear. It's and the I underwear. It, exactly. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I went from there to, to exist and I bought one of their pouch briefs, a contour uh, mm-hmm. briefs. So, they were really cool at that time, so I, I bought some of those and slowly just started getting little things here and there. And I don't like to throw things away. I like uh, saving my underwear collection, so I have quite a bit in my collection from you know briefs, thongs, jock straps, bikini briefs, tonga briefs, uh, you name it. I probably have bought it. Good deal. Sounds good. Sounds like you started very good brand and just kept going so that's good to Definitely. hear the gateway calvin coming yeah yes so, i remember the time when i was buying it too in the store um i was nervous as hell <laughs> being 16 in the underwear uh, section at calvin klein and it was yeah we have in our mind that oh my god this is so sexy this is so whatever and you're like oh what's the clerk gonna think what's the clerk gonna think and then the clerk's like i really don't care i'm just working this department just cause and here you go bye but it's like i've told that that to many people who won't shop who won't shop underwear in person because there's a lot out there and of course now it's easier with online but at the time it's like you could only buy it on in the store and it's like oh no and i'm like i bought thongs i bought jocks i bought i said i bought everything and i really didn't care i just bought it and left so exactly yeah. that's what you got to do um but it, but luckily first we have it ones, easy these days yeah this first one's just like oh i'm so excited oh my god so yeah 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 you're right. sweating and everything it's it's uh and there was a uh, there was a couple younger couple in the underwear section too and the girlfriend wanted to buy underwear for the guy and he they were kind of arguing as to what they were going to get he wanted to get a trunk and she wanted him to get like a, a brief and it was just kind of you know me going through a panic attack trying to find something for myself but also still getting to watch them buy what they were going to buy it's like get it's out great. of my way you're in my way oh my god smooth move move I've done that exactly. before where it's like, I've got to buy these quick. Come on. Oh, I remember those days all too well. Yes. <laughs> so what are your current favorite styles in your rotation? What What are your go-tos for everyday wear and whatnot? Uh, that's a tough one for me because uh, for those who follow my Instagram, you'll know for sure that I could just go from a a brief to a thong to a jock, um, you know, day after day, or just go a whole week for just wearing briefs. So um, that's what I love about wearing, you know, my love for underwear is that I I love all of it. I think it's kind of like uh, if you have a love for food, you just don't say, well, I only eat Chinese food, but uh, I don't eat Italian food. You know, you're going to try everything. That's Uh, blasphemy. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> what? I know, I know. And so with, with me and underwear, it's like I'll wear bikinis, I'll wear thongs, I'll wear jocks, I'll wear, dare I say, it's gonna sound, I'm going to say something offensive on this podcast, I'll wear boxers. Uh, so, yes. Boxers. I know oh, you got rallying people yes. up with the boxers. Yes, I know, I know. It's the, it's the, the uh, Antichrist. straight girl in me, I guess, that comes out. It's the Antichrist <laughs> of the underwear much. movement. Yes. It is, it is, but they don't come out too frequently. So, yes. Uh, if you're at home, the gym, I, lounging yeah. around, you get a pass, but wearing them underpants, oh, no. 
Yeah, and then when I do wear them, I say to myself, why do they wear these? Uh, so yes, I, I, you know, I, I learned from my mistakes. But you know, when it comes to the gym, because I do like working out maybe five to six times a week, uh, it, I'm always in a jock. Um, I feel like it, it's just supportive. And if I'm not in a jock for the gym, it's sometimes, you know, a brief or a thong. But for everyday wear, I, I really do love typical, you know, uh, a simple tidy whitey or uh, a brief, you know, my favorite brands are, are you know, Aussie Bum. I, I think that they make great briefs um, uh, for yes. jock straps. I, you know, it's so supportive. I like bike. I like pump. They're all great brands. Yes. And I've informed him of at least one 50% off sale. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I'm no stranger to that sale. <laughs> Cause you're like, damn you for letting me know. I was like, yeah. It's like buy underwear, buy underwear. I'm an enabler. Buy it too much. Buy it. You can never have too much. I don't care. I think even ten thousand pairs is not enough. But I just didn't know when you knew to wear them. That's my only thing with that. But if I had ten thousand <laughs> pairs, I would be like, yes, suck it, everyone. I have the most underwear ever. But yeah. sadly, I don't. But no. So your favorite? You said your favorite brands. And I'll bring up one thing that I don't have on the questions. I'm going off script because, you know, it's my podcast and I can. You're one yeah. of the few guys who likes the Speedo tan line because in your pictures you have it. And the, yeah. so many want the thong tan line, but you stick to the Speedo tan line. Yeah, I'm no stranger to that Speedo tan line. As you can see from my photos, <laughs> some people have asked me, wouldn't it be easier just a tan and a thong? And I, I say to them... I love a thong tan line. I love a speedo tan line, but for me, uh, I think it's easier to maintain a speedo tan line. Mm -hmm. But also um, for the tan lines, I think that there's just something, you know, for myself being a man attracted to men, there's something I find just so uh, sexually appealing to just seeing a speedo tan line. And I don't know what it is, but it just works for me. And so that's why I like it now. Now, I have to say, if there's one thing I, I definitely want to say is that I don't want to encourage anyone to lay out in the sun to get any type of tan. My tan is artificial. It comes from a bottle, <laughs> so I do a spray-on tan. <laughs> so please use good, good, uh, use good judgment uh, and practice sunscreen. protection and sunscreen because the last thing I want is to someone see, to see my page, to see my tan line and think I could lay out in the sun and look like that if you want to. It's your decision, but please, uh, you know, use protection. Use protection in all its forms. That's just what I say. But yes. Yeah. And since I live in, <laughs> since I'm in Southern California, I'm no stranger to Black's Beach. I've uh, been there many of times, and I love wearing my Speedo uh, on the beach or even at the pool. Um, and, yeah, Speedo just works. Well, to you, Black's Beach, you can wear whatever you want to. Who cares? And then I'll throw my two cents about the tan line. I'm in the school of New York when I grew up guys didn't wear thongs to the beach that often or hardly so the mm -hmm. speedo tan line was the one that you know that always was like ooh, especially in like the pornos and whatnot uh mm -hmm. for you kids listening who are younger that's videotapes you used to have in the in the 90s to watch it you couldn't watch it online um you had to watch it and they always had the tan line so that that just reminds me of that. Or you have a high guy and he would have the tan, speedo tan. Line. Oh, I'm no stranger. I'm no stranger to those videos. I know that's for a different podcast. But yeah, I think that there's just something so uh, uh, unique about seeing a, a, a well defined speedo tan. It's like getting to see a part of the body that uh, no one gets to see. Exactly. And that's what I find sexually appealing. And then they sort of moved to thongs, but way before the regular public did. And then they had none. So it kind yeah. of, whatever. So do your friends and partners know about your love of underwear or is it just Instagram people or? Um, yeah, so my partner definitely knows uh, my love of underwear because he's always complaining uh, about how much underwear I have, whether it be, you know, taking up drawer space and I have my own underwear drawer drawers. Uh, <laughs> and I also um, can get in trouble when I'm trying to hide uh you know, the Aussie bomb shipment or <laughs> anything like well, that. Well, I'm going to tell you how you do it. You get it shipped to work and then you bring it home 
and put it in the drawer and be like, I've had that. What are you talking about? That's, that's <laughs> old. But I work from home. Oh, damn. We'll get it sent to a friend. <laughs> yes, it's not mine. It's my friend's. I'm and then friend. bring it when you go out and have them sneak it to you and put it in a bag, you know, like a backpack or something, and then bring it home and then just put it in the drawer and be like, that's old. That's old. I don't know what you're talking about. Or if you have a yes. good neighbor, get it to deliver it to them. But. That's something that we could do. Uh, I could possibly do uh, for certain. And my, my friends do know that I, I have at least a jockstrap fetish. Uh, my gay friends do. My straight friends knew that would be a bit odd. But uh, me participating <laughs> in recreational <Wow>. sports, <laughs> yes, i have uh, no stranger to wearing a jock when it comes to, you know, being in, in recreational sports. My friends know that I've unfortunately, you know, given the so- Southern California weather, I'm typically out there on the field shirtless and in a pair of shorts and, uh, you know, how things uh, right men up. can be. Yes, and things right up. And also, um, you know, team members can be uh, dicks and they'll pull your shorts down. So I've been pants a number of times and just standing there in a jock strap. And maybe well, we... some of the <laughs> listeners might like that idea. But when you're standing there in front of a large group of people, <laughs> there you have it. Well, they're just jealous. They can't wear a jock. But yeah, no, I'm just saying. Definitely. So, mm. So you just have to, I'm just always empower people to get as much underwear as they want. It's just my thing. And oddly enough, all my straight friends in here are running underwear blog in an underwear store. So it's like, you run an underwear store? That's so cool. And I'm like, do you want to get your man some underwear? One of my friends yeah. has. And the other, it's like, oh, girl, your man needs new underwear. Ugh. But see them boxers one more time. I'm going to throat punch him. Okay. I'm just telling you. Do I'm something. not gonna lie. One of my favorite discussions is to, you know, when it's organic, have a underwear conversation with a friend, whether it be, you know, a girl, a girl complaining that she doesn't like her boyfriend's underwear, or um, just casually talking about underwear uh, with friends, just like, oh, you know, what do you, what do you prefer to wear? Those are my favorite types of combos. Those are good. That's why the podcast is so popular because we have those conversations. It's great that way because I'm yes. still people don't get to have those conversations on a regular basis, which sucks because, you know, they're fun. They're great to have. And I always tell my fr- girlfriends yeah. who complain about their underwear, I'm like, just throw the shit away and buy something. He'll wear it. <laughs> he wants to get Definitely. your pants because uh, he'll wear it. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You know, throw so. up the Hanes boxer briefs and get him a pair of. Calvin Klein, you know, uh, trunks or even, you know, exactly. brief because if, if your man's got the, the aesthetic, go for briefs. And it's amazing to see how many straight guys I've seen actually uh, switch to briefs. Well, it's, you have to do there. kind of gradually and you have to get them the good stuff. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, get them the good stuff, but don't go overboard and get them something, you know, like purple or I was like, stick with the classics, you know, Black, navy, blue, white, you know, the classic colors, nothing crazy. And then once you get him hooked on that, then you can go. Even a Exactly. Trunk. Something where if he got hit by a car and was in the ambulance and the medics were taking his pants off, he's not going to be, you know. He's not going to be embarrassed. Off. It's like, oh, okay, no big deal. And then once he gets hooked, then you get him on other stuff. Because it's like, okay, once you get good underwear, you don't go back. Because exactly. All of us know that once you put on that first pair and you're like, oh, my God, where has this been all my life? Um, They won't go back to the really bad stuff. And then they hate you later because you make them buy like 15 to 20 dollar pairs of underwear. And I'm like, ah, that's your problem now. Um, And there are such great fabrics out there. The micro model, the, uh, you know, Supima cotton, the the blends. Oh, it's just, you know, that's why I have so much. (laughs) And when they work out with them, they're like, oh, my God, it doesn't feel like a wet diaper when I get done. And I'm like, no kidding. Because yeah. it's made to do that. Hello. Yeah. Oh, enough about straight boys. Although I have to tell you about a podcast I'm doing after this featuring a straight boy. That's a hint for all you other oh. people. You just have to wait and see. So, yeah. So your partners know, your friends know. That's good. Is there any time where it boosted your confidence that you remember wearing good underwear? 
you kind of mentioned it before, feeling good when you put this pair on, like you were the model. Anything stick out in your mind or? Oh, all the time. I mean, every day I put on a great pair of underwear and it makes me feel a certain way. If I'm feeling, you know, a leopard print thong type of day, I'll wear it. <laughs> and if I'm wearing a, you know, if I've got something business oriented, sometimes I feel, you know, I'm in finance and some days I just feel like uh, if I'm wearing a power pair of uh, uh, tidy whities for some reason, just makes me feel like I'm a businessman and I can do it. <laughs> See. There's something about a man in a thong wearing something unexpected under the suit that I just love. Yes, Whether it's like I completely a thong agree. Or a pink jock or something that he's or a bikini, something he's like the man's not supposed to wear under a suit, but it's like just one of my favorite things to do is sometimes I'll have to go to formal events, whether it be like at a country club or some type of setting similar, and I will wear the most wild pair of underwear underneath my slacks, like a, you know, a leopard print brief or a jock strap, a pump, you know, jock strap, just in case. <laughs> you never know. Listen to you. We're going to have another podcast and we're going deeper into this conversation. Um, yeah. This is definitely podcast number two material. That's my final question, believe it or not. Hard to believe that was the interview. Super simple, super fun. And the last question is the very easiest question of them all. Where can they find you on social media? Oh, cool. Uh, so my Instagram is Cody Chambers SD. And also I do have a Twitter. Um, I post on my Instagram almost uh, daily. My Twitter, uh, not so much just because I only post photos on there that would pretty much get banned on Instagram because I am a man and I'm proud to be a man. And you I have, have a bulge. Certain, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly it. I have the and papers by no now. means am I saying I'm the largest guy in the world, but you know, sometimes my um, uh, body has been banned on Instagram. <laughs> I have the vapors. I know. Oh my God. No, no, say it's not so. Say it's not so. <sighs> right. Okay. Yeah, Instagram is, and then Twitter is right now, it's a hot mess. So we don't know what's going on over there. But yeah, thank you for coming on, mister. It's good to have you on. We'll have you back on again soon because there's so many more topics we can talk about. And we will work on that in the future. Uh, thank everyone for listening to this. We'll have another podcast soon. I'm working on many, 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 many podcasts. I want a quick update. We will be having our Secret Santa show this year. And it's not as soon as I had hoped, but we're getting it out, and we will have that for you in the first part of December. So get ready for that one. All right, everyone, have a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to our show. If you like what you hear, consider supporting us at Patreon at patreon.com slash UNB blog. Follow us on social media. You can follow the blog at UNB blog on Twitter and Instagram. Read the blog at unbblog.com. Also follow me if you like art or anything else fun and underwear at UNB Tim on Instagram and also Twitter. Thanks for listening and we'll have more podcasts at you very soon. Bye. <music>